I have one more question about kind of the music biz, I guess. And, you know, as someone that's now a music executive, a music business executive, I mean, what, what's the, what's the responsible, sensible, fair, equitable way for this whole thing to shake out in terms of streaming, in terms of the internet, in terms of, you know, playing music live, how does this work? Like how, how do, how do people make a sustainable life making music? It's evolution. Uh, it kind of goes along with that analogy I made earlier to tell audiences not to listen to music for free is ridiculous in my opinion. It's like if somebody, again, like if somebody put a donkey in front of you and a Tesla and told you the Tesla exists, but you are not allowed to use that Tesla. That's not fair. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, and I, I think that's what's happening with, with, uh, people that listen to music. I can't blame them. Uh, the life is hard enough right now. Things are, especially in the U S expensive enough. And if I have a way of listening to music that makes me happy for free, yes, I'm going to do it. Of course. Um, I have no idea what the answer is of of how things will become more sustainable for the music industry. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I, I, know, I know that I love music and I'll, I'll continue to have my eyes and ears open for for any ideas. Uh, I mean, on a more... On a more businessy tip, uh, licensing music is one of the only ways left to, to make a living as a musician. Just uh, if, there, if there are films that that you like and they like your music, to have that to have your music on that film is one of the few ways I think that that you can make a living. Um, so, so, like for you, you know, making recordings, performing live. Um, all of this stuff is licensing. Is that maybe not the biggest chunk, but is that? Do you feel like that's kind of like a a bigger chunk of the thing compared to some of those other things? Or no, no. But I'm just saying, it, if it were, <laughs> that's that's uh, that's like a 401k. Uh, if you have music in a film or or TV or something, it's just for the rest of your life. When that gets played, you make a little bit of money. And that's what I mean. Like it's yeah. more of a bigger picture thing. Yeah. Now, if you're somebody that has a bunch of your music and films and TV and stuff, then yeah, that, that will be your major source of income. Yeah. I mean, and you've, you've played for, you've been a part of recordings and composed for film and, and um, I guess what, what surprised you about that process? Is, is was there anything that you were just kind of like something happened, or and it was just kind of like, oh wow, I did not imagine. It can imagine. be pretty gross. Yeah, it can be pretty disgusting. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, I there's a there's this weird sort of thing that's happening now that I guess has been happening for a couple of decades ever since that iPod came out. Uh, it feels like musicians are just kind of an afterthought. Uh, in the filmmaking process, uh, there's so much emphasis on the look and the acting and everything. And then, yeah, the music is the last thing. And I don't know if it's a lack of music education in schools, but it really feels like, uh, there's, there's music literacy is just abysmal. <laughs> People don't know the difference between a trumpet and a flute. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it can be extremely superficial, the whole film world. Uh, but I found that the people that are very good at their jobs in the film world just cut through all that bullshit. They don't, they don't, they just love what they do and they want to get better at it. it like, it just feels like the 99% of people underneath that, that's just, it can get pretty disgusting pretty quickly. Um. I guess to, to end on that's a, my optimistic take on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just to end on like kind of like a slight, you know, up, uptick. I mean, what, what are you hopeful for 
these days? I mean, you can just, you don't have to, it could be something simple, but you know, what, what's, what's helping you get up in the morning? The people I love in my life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. I love my family. I love my wife. Uh, I love my friends. Uh, it's, it's, this is a very bleak era for humanity right now. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, yeah, uh, but I mean, if there's a silver lining, I think it is that sort of sense of empathy that we all know how much we're, we're suffering through this. And uh, there are people that are suffering way more than, than we are. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I hope that we can we can see each each other each other's reflections when we when we look at each other there's a lot of uh political tension in the US right now um uh there's yeah there's a lot of people that are just so hungry for power that they don't care uh, how much the majority of society suffers because of of their hunger for that power um I just hope that that people educate themselves uh, and just learn, to, you know, to just learn facts, you know, not not opinions. You can only have an opinion if you know the facts. Um, yeah, I I champion uh, curiosity. I champion science. I champion the arts. Um, I even champion politics. Uh, to, to, to be honest, uh, that's what separates us from the rest of uh, the living world, our ability to communicate and to have systems of, of civil order and be able to discuss things um, in a civil manner. Yeah, let's just, I think everybody should just learn stuff. <laughs> like, uh, and, and not from Facebook. Please get off of Facebook. <laughs> Honestly, it's just, it's bad for you. It's not good for you. It's bad for you. Yeah, for real. End the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we're here to do. We're here to we're here to learn and make, make sure to share this everywhere. <laughs> share <laughs> this everywhere. Not if I'm, maybe I'm. I don't know. I don't. But um, yeah, it means a lot to to be able to talk to you, and I'm I'm so same here. I'm so happy, and uh, I feel so so honored that. You're taking some time out of your busy, they're very busy schedule to hang out. And, no, but I, and, and, and I've always, I've always wanted to thank you because you were so, you encouraged me so much with Biophilia Records at the beginning, uh, and and you you still continue to. But there were honestly moments that I thought, man, I don't know if uh, if I could do this. And then I I don't know, I don't remember the exact conversation, but. Yeah, you were so encouraging about it that I was like, yeah, maybe maybe this is a thing that I could. and and yeah, so thank you. You're you're such a nice guy. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you really are. You deserve all the wonderful things that happen to you. Oh, well yeah, they do and they do. They keep ha the wonderful yeah. things keep happening to me. Yeah. I mean, well that's all very sweet. Um I mean, I I feel the same way about you. Just feel so encouraged by I don't know. I also think that just ev oh. everything you've done, everything you do is is such a beacon. You know, I think I, I talk about you all the time to my students and everybody, you know, just as like, oh. just as a, an example that like, you can, you can be very successful, be like a super great person. And like, if you do these things, just, you know. And have a unibrow. If, <laughs> Um, yeah. No, what I, what, thank you. What I was going to say is that, um, I don't know if you remember, but we recorded something a long time ago that I wrote. It was for like a woodwind quintet and you, and there were electronics that you, you were running it through. It was called Flamboyang. <laughs> I'm rewriting an arrangement of that after like, I don't know, 15 years. Uh -huh. No, it hasn't been 15 years. It's been like close, 10 years. yeah. It's, yeah. It's close. For for big band, uh, I got commissioned to write some music for a big band here in Perth, and yeah, randomly that just popped in my head, and it's just been sitting in a drawer for a while. Yeah, and yeah, I just, I've been hearing your voice in that because <laughs> yeah, because I remember there was like open sections that you and I just like hooked up and we went 
in a certain direction. And that was very fun. And thank you for making music with me. Aw, yeah. I loved, uh, I loved our just like, we're just going to cram in like your tiny bedroom in like the Upper West Side or whatever and just like make weird noises and yeah. scare all the cats in the building. Like that was yeah. a, a <laughs> highlight, a highlight of that time for sure. That was super fun. Yeah. I, I, miss, I, New, I miss New York the- in a lot of ways just because of that kind of like, oh yeah, I'm just going to like, I'm going to like hoof it down 15 blocks and then we're going to n- do something amazing. It just, you know, it's a very unique, unique time and place. Yeah. But, you know, I find, I find that all throughout the world, there are little bright lights scattered. The, like Perth, Perth is one of the most isolated cities in the world. Um, and, and there are people here, you know, they're, they're, they're very aware of how far away they are from like New York and Paris and Berlin and all those places. <laughs> but man, there are some incredibly uh, energetic uh, artists and musicians in this town that fight so hard to keep it alive. Um, there aren't that many uh, musicians here, but the ones that are here, like they're like they're warriors. They're keeping it alive here, and I I'm sure that those people exist all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're one of them. <laughs> I found that to be true. I mean, even just in like you know small town Wisconsin, like the there are people there that are like that are doing the real thing and um yeah and like eat, are eating and sleeping I, I think that's the interesting thing about just music cause. where it's just like you don't you don't really need you almost kind of don't even really need anybody else to be there like you could you could be locked in a cave um and be doing some you know and just be really doing the real thing i mean obviously it's like there's nothing that compares to collaborating and being with other people but um but yeah there there are people everywhere doing doing amazing amazing stuff it's weird that we don't hear them you know it's it's weird how and weird and what i mean by weird is just kind of it's a huge problem you know that i think that that i think we all assumed the internet would fix but the the tricky thing is everything is so saturated now that it we're it's almost worse in some ways where it's just like really just the you know this really small percentage of artists are getting heard um, yeah, but there's more music made today than ever. I I think yeah. you know partly because there's more people than ever, but um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, because it's so saturated. There, there's this sort of feeling of, uh, of fuzziness and warmth when you do find something that you think only you know about. And it's like, oh man, this is my little my little gold nugget here that I this is my music and. Uh, that that's a special thing, um, and I remember for a while there, like you were sharing with me the people you were into, and sure enough, as soon as I heard it, I'm like, I'm not gonna stop listening to this for like <laughs> a year. Saint Vincent was definitely one of them. Yeah, Strange Mercy, that album. Yeah, the Dirty yeah. Projectors too. You hit me to them. Dirty Projectors, yeah. yeah. I was coming at you with like the, with like kind of like the white boy indie rock, like I was coming at it pretty hard. I mean that. I think at, there was that time too where I was feeling like I don't I don't know if I don't know if I could be even it I don't know if I am a jazz musician I don't know if I could be a jazz musician you know in the way that in the way that I was kind of experiencing it and so I I think I was really looking for alternatives and and just kind of also being like what what else where do I see myself in all of this you know and I don't know I think I th- I think that's a I don't know where that question even comes from because it's like, um, why do I need to find other people that are making the music that I want to make? Why can't I just make it? You know what I mean? Like, or, or whatever that kind of thing is. But, um, I, we're all so, so in search of like models, uh, like you were saying, you know, there's role models in life, but also role models in music. Yeah. At a certain point that has to be you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't know how this is like... I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this will actually even wrap up. I think I might just like... <laughs>